Welcome to the Investor Financing Podcast, where we interview real estate investors and lenders so you can learn all the secrets to getting your projects funded and scale your portfolio. Learn about fix and flip loans, Burr financing, rental, fix to rent, commercial, multifamily bridge loans, business loans, and so much more. And now, your host, Bo Eckstein. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Investor Financing Podcast. And today's episode is where to find the best source to fund my multifamily project. So there's many different options and there's many kind of scenarios that go into play on what is going to be the best option to fund your deal. So we got to look at your experience. We're going to look at your net worth. We're going to look at the project itself and what the exit strategy is. Is it a, is it a short-term hold? Are you going to sell it in two years or are you going to do you want to hold it long term? Is there a big value add play, meaning you're going to raise rents, you're going to put some capex or renovation into the property? Those kind of determine uh, where to place the, the loan, okay? Where to place the debt. So, for example, if it's a short term deal and you're looking to refinance or sell, we don't want to lock you into a long term prepayment prepayment penalty. So we wouldn't want to put you into, say, a HUD multifamily loan or even agency debt typically, although there is one project, uh, one loan product with a shorter term prepayment penalty, which is geared more for the flip on a Fannie Mae product, or excuse me, a Freddie Mac product. But what we're going into is kind of the details of what, where to think and where to place and so forth. So we're going to look at your experience level. We're going to look at your net worth. Those are requirements for agency debt, okay? If you don't have a net worth uh, greater to the loan amount, then uh, agency will not be a good choice. Although if you have other partners, we use all the sponsors in there collectively and the sponsor's net worth has to be greater to or equal to uh, the loan amount. Plus the sponsorship team needs to have 10% post close liquidity. Meaning if you have a $3 million loan, there's gotta be 300,000 liquid after you close on the property in reserves, okay? You're listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. We'll be right back after this break. Are you looking for funding? Are you getting frustrated trying to find a lender? Visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com and click the Get Funding button. Complete the simple form and schedule a free phone consultation with one of our placement specialists. We have a proprietary directory of funding partners that can help you get the funding you need. It's fast and easy to explore the options available for your specific needs. Don't wait. Visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com and get connected. So um, maybe we're looking at a deal and it's a smaller property. It's a, it's a, it's a $700,000 purchase. Okay. So small balance agency debt is off the table. So then we look at bank, we look at um, some credit unions because those would probably be the best options at the time. And let's just say it's a big renovation project. There are bridge lenders out there that will lend similar to like a fix and flip loan program. So they might lend 70 to 85% of costs and which includes the rehab portion of the funding. Then you renovate the property, increase rents, fill the vacancies and refinance now because your property is worth a million six. Now you're able to go get a, a loan with uh, Fannie or Freddie or another bank loan refinance. So those are kind of the options that you do have. So each scenario is different. Each, each sponsorship or borrower group is different, but there's so many different options. So just kind of listening to this and figuring out, okay, well, this is probably going to be the best for this upcoming project I have, or this might not. What's common now that you're seeing is that um, people are going in with bridge money and then they're uh, raising rents or stabilizing the property. And then they're going into HUD. We call that bridge to HUD because HUD, if you're planning on holding a property long-term, you got 35 year fixed rate. And right now they're in the mid to low two. So you can't really beat that cost of capital. So long-term holds, HUD is a great, great option. Um, along with agency debt can be, a, can be a better fit depending on the property characteristics. Uh, sometimes agency might be more advantageous. 
Um, there's also USDA for rural property. So if you're in a population of 50,000 or less and it's in an eligible area, USDA multifamily pr uh, product could be a good fit because um, the smaller tertiary markets are difficult to fund sometimes because the population is small. They're underwritten to a lot harder standard and so forth. Um, going back to the multifamily business. So if a property is is 90% or less occupied, um, agency debt might not be the best option because the only option they would have is their bridge product. So agency is really good for stabilized properties with a little bit of value add. There's You can force appreciation through rent bumps and so forth. Um, so you can negotiate with agency debt to get supplementals down the road to, get, to um, bring, bring on more proceeds to maybe pay off investors in, in your, um, in your limited partnership group. So there's, there's a lot of different options to go. So, so essentially there's really just a few questions that we need to know. And we want to look at your rent roll. We want to look at a year to date interim financial statement. We want to look at two years of profit and losses from the property. Obviously, if you have any kind of marketing or pictures of the property, we'd like to look at that. Um, and that really kind of helps us. And then based upon your experience, your sponsorship experience, your management experience, we can determine what is the best fit for you on that multifamily loan request. And that's essentially how we're sizing up the, requ the, the request. And also too, if you got to close extremely fast, sometimes a bridge loan is, is better because you can close quick, right? If you're trying to close a HUD loan, it's going to take you 90 to 120 days and maybe longer right now because they're so busy. They've uh, HUD this quarter, the third quarter of, of this year, they received more applications than they did of all last year. So you can just see that a lot of people, a lot of investors and sponsors are going the government insured route because that's what's getting funded right now, right? SBA, there's the same thing with SBA. It's a government insured product, USDA, BNI loans. So there's a huge uptick in those kind of applications right now. Hope you enjoy this episode. Try to keep them short and sweet and kind of dial in some points on the different loan products out there. And today we talked about multifamily uh, lending and all the different programs that are, our, are for these. You got Bridge, you got bank, you got credit union, you got small balance agency, Fannie and Freddie, you got USDA for rural properties, you got hard money for quick uh, uh, quick acquisitions and, and heavy rehabs. Uh, we also look, a lot of people are buying um, inner, city, any inner city properties with vacancies at like 30 and 40%, right? So those, that's all, of course, going to be bridge money. Whatever your scenario is, there's usually a solution and just figuring out how to structure the capital stack appropriately is key. Uh, hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. For show notes and useful resources, please visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. For questions or comments, email info at InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. If you enjoy our show, please share it with your network. Until next time.